uh, here's here's the deal, folks. My guest this afternoon for the next hour and a half about Dr. Dennis Brunet. Now, I've known Dr. Brunet for many, many years, 23, 24 years. He is Ph.D. in theology and adjunct professor, New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, some 36 years in ministry, 23 years as the senior pastor of Midway Baptist Church, uh, has done a lot of radio himself and uh, a lot of writing and uh, is just highly respected wherever he goes. Um, I, I, I love this man. He helped me with my first book, uh, The Magic Man in the Sky. I was joking at the beginning that I said basically he wrote it for me. And what I meant by that was I sent him the manuscript, and it came back all marked up with all this red stuff. <laughs> and he basically called me up very graciously, and he basically said, Carl, you can't publish this. This stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I said, Dennis, help me. <laughs> but no, he, it's, I, I'm being a little overly dramatic, but he did help me immensely to get that manuscript ready to submit to the publishers and, and did become a best-selling book. And I praise God for that. And Dennis, thank you for helping me. And you wrote a very gracious forward in there as well. So I appreciate that. Oh, you're yeah. welcome, man. But thanks for being here today. Yeah. Well, listen, folks. Dennis, tell people a little about, about yourself. Dennis comes from uh, the, the swamplands, the Cajun lands of uh, southwest Louisiana. Uh, a lot of his family spoke French until the day they passed away. And uh, uh, this, this, this guy's got quite, a, quite an amazing story. So just give folks a little bit of background on who you are, where you came from, and what's going on in your life. And then we're going to get into some okay. issues of the day. Well, I'm honored to be here. And, and I did. I grew up in south Louisiana, about 70 miles south kind of almost due south of New Orleans okay. on a little bayou called Bayou Lafouche. And, yeah. Yeah. and my parents were very, very Cajans. They were 100% Cajun people. Yeah. Mom and dad, wonderful, grew up speaking French to the day my dad went to be with the Lord. We wow. would always speak together he, in French. He loved to to do that. And, and um, I have a wife. Um, been married for 37 years. We yes. have eight beautiful children. Yeah, they are gorgeous. Five daughters. God knew I needed girls. Yep. And three sons. Yep. And, They're awesome kids. And, and they are. They're a blessing to my life. We we have a one-eyed cat. <laughs> we we have... Is a, his a, name Boudreaux? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but there was a one-eyed cat that knocked him and all when they used to sit on the bayou and drink wine. There was a one-eyed cat, and they named him Silves. Shadow me. And what does that mean? Well, it was the man's name because down the bayou, a few uh, miles down, there was a man named Silves Shadow me who was blind in one eye. <laughs> oh, no. So they named the cat, and, <laughs> you know, and all that good stuff. But 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 I'm blessed. I I really am. Yeah. Um, Lord's given me opportunities. You know, Dad Dad couldn't read and write. I know you told me that. And because there wasn't real back then, there weren't schools on that spot of the Bible. On the on the bayou, I'm thinking yeah. of Bible, yeah. but but um, it's um, so your dad couldn't read and write, and you wound up with a PhD. Well, what God, a what a blessing! God was good. Now, yeah. mom lived a few miles up the bayou, and their school went to the sixth grade. Oh wow! So and she was so, highly educated. <laughs> well, they really they really were. Yeah. They ran three businesses. Yeah, and dad, I remember asking him because old pop was. Uh, wonderfully wise and i asked him one day i said why don't you now he was old and i said why why don't you want to learn to write yeah. and he said he always called me buddy uh -huh. he said he said because i would know just enough to get me in trouble <laughs> <laughs> he said I would start believing that I knew and understood everything I was reading. <laughs> and so he left it to mama. And, and, and I tell you what, that's a lot of truth in that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of truth in that. A lot of people are educated beyond their intelligence. Yeah, you know I, I mean? heard that. In fact, uh, I've dealt with some just last week. <laughs> Uh, well, you're probably talking to one right no, now. It may be, but I doubt it. Here's what we're going to do, Dennis. We're going to take a me. we're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, I'm going to get Dennis to tell one really funny story about his life, and then we're going to get. And now the commander in chief is back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, and we are back. Welcome back, America. And my guest this afternoon is Dr. Dennis Brunet, and uh, uh, he does have a PhD. 
in theology and adjunct professor at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, 36 years in the ministry, 23 years. Great Midway Baptist Church, Midway, Florida. You've got some fine folks down it's there. It's a wonderful church. Oh, it is a wonderful church family. You've got some really, really top-notch people down there that love the Lord, know I'm the blessed. Word of God. You're blessed, but they're blessed as well to have a good, solid, consistent pastor be there 23 years. Unbelievable. So very few pastors stay in, the, in one pulpit that long with the people. But you've, I've, been, I've been blessed to have been asked to be in your pulpit a few times. Your people are so gracious. And uh, anyway, you're a blessed man. All right, listen. So you grew up on the bayou, and we're going to talk about world events and theology in a moment. But tell some folks some just one funny story uh, about life on the bayou. I think your daddy was a sh did, ran some shrimp boats and your brothers and some stuff that you guys did that just people now could not even relate to. Tell some stories. Well, you know, right now, being Cajun is popular. You know, yeah, isn't that something? <laughs> people. When I was a boy, we didn't grow up down the bayou, right. as they called it, with the mosquitoes and the alligators and the snakes, right. because we were popular. Right. <laughs> okay? So that's that's where we were. We Dad built a business uh, of, of shrimp boats. My, my two brothers and myself worked on them from the time we were, we were boys. At 12 years old, when we worked off the coast of Mississippi along the ship channels, because you had to work at night there. Right. At 12. Right. I ran the wheel from midnight to 5 a.m. Good gosh. At 12 years old. Yeah. You grew up in a hurry on the bayou. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, you just had to. Yeah. You just had to. Nobody was being mean. That's where we did. We formed, and also we had, we had, um, we had trapping land mm -hmm. where we would trap animals. And mm -hmm. so, so we were taught to do that. And, and, uh, that was for the pelt and the meat, huh? Right. Yeah. And, and alligators, when they first came off the endangered species, we were one of the first groups to get tags for them and right. all of that. So I sit down and swamp people, and I can tell my children, that's true, that's not <laughs> that's true. That's not true. That's, that's Hollywood. True. This yeah, is true. Yeah. <laughs> this is, but, but, and people ask, they say, well, man, it must have been scary, you know, with the alligators and everything else. I said, let me tell you the scariest thing was when you would get a, a net or, or, or some, um, some an anchor rope in the prop on the boat and so you had to we didn't have scuba gear right so dad would make us take a five gallon bucket oh, turn gosh. it upside down oh, catch gosh. the air and go down and squeeze it under the hull oh my gosh and so you would you would hold on to a rope go down and this is this is not florida water this yeah. is south louisiana dark water. muddy you, you can't see no and so and so the people that weren't smart that you could always tell by the digits on the fingers they lost because they cut so the fingers that's off. Right, <laughs> so you'd grab it and you would cut, and then when you ran out of air, you'd have to crawl on the bottom of the hull, let your air out, yeah, and stick your head in the bucket and pray to God to breathe that there was some air in there. Well, I will tell you, my two brothers were much braver than me because that would. The first time wasn't bad. I mean, I'm not breathing now, just listening to no, you. I'm, but, I'm I'm claustrophobic just listening to you. But go ahead. But but. You would go the first time, catch your breath, come down. Well, the water would rise, and you had to go a second time, yeah. or Daddy would slap you when you came up. So that was always, <laughs> is there enough air, or is it worth getting slapped? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think I would have to take the slappings. <laughs> I got it more I, than one time. I think time. I'd just come up and say, slap me. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. That's amazing. Well, folks, listen, when we come back, we'll take your calls, and Dennis and I are going to get into some of the biblical, prophetic, theological issues of the day, things going on right in the headline news, and we're going to relate them to a biblical worldview. We want you to be a part of it if you'd like. 623-1330, area code 850, Freedom Friday, Carl Gallup's my guest, Dennis Brunet. We'll be right back after this timeout. Listen, uh, we're, we're just going to talk about things going on in the world and things related to a biblical worldview, prophecy, uh, apostasy, <laughs> uh, theology, um, uh, uh, controversy, sensationalism, and uh, we're going to give our opinions and just start having a conversation about these things. And if, you, if something sparks your interest, and I know a lot of you just like to sit back and listen, of course, this second hour, a lot of you are on your drive time right now, but if you want to ask some questions of Dr. Brunet, that's why he's here. If you want to ask Dennis some questions, ask me some questions, or get involved, or give your opinion on something, please feel free. 623-1330 is the number. 850 is the area code. Dennis, let me start with this because okay. this is, um, uh, I was 
interviewing this morning on a radio station out of Wisconsin. Mike LeMay is the host. It's called Stand Up for Truth. They have an international audience. And um, I've been on their show quite a few times. And we were talking about this, and I really would love you to sound off on it. Um, Michael Gungor, or Michael Gunger, is a, um, a top name in the Christian music industry, Christian uh, artist, music artist. But he's come under a lot of controversy in the mainline headline news of mainstream media because, and especially Christian media, but even in mainstream, because recently he has uh, proclaimed that he thinks that the creation account in Genesis is basically all allegory. And when kind of questioned about, well, you know, but Jesus talked about that and declared it as truth. Uh, it, it, Jesus talks about the creation story and Adam and Eve and man and woman and, uh, and, and the six days of creation. And, and so he, when he was asked about that, he said, well, and I'm paraphrasing, but he basically mm -hmm. said that, well, Jesus probably just didn't understand or he just didn't know what he was talking about. Or maybe Jesus was just playing to the superstition of the day, etc. I mean, just what I would call pure heresy. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to hush and just let you go off on it, but uh, uh, Mike LeMay, the host of this show, they, they had a huge uh, Christian concert up in uh, Wisconsin, and, and um, Mike LeMay and his radio station, they refused to support this concert once they saw that Michael Gungor was one of the main attractions. And the people that had booked it refused to unbook Michael Gungor, even though he was espousing what I think you and I would consider to be pure heresy. And and I applaud Mike LeMay and those folks standing right. for truth for that. But w w what do you say to somebody like a Michael Gungor, who's this big worship leader, this icon in the Christian music industry, who basically just spits on the Word of God? Well, you're finding a couple of things, my friend. Mm -hmm. As biblical literacy understanding what the Bible says has diminished mm -hmm. in our generation. Mm -hmm. It's been replaced by music. Mm -hmm. No longer do we have a theology, mm -hmm. but we have a doxology theology. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Whereby, whereby my music gives me credibility to the audience, and then uh, I begin to espouse and theology from, from that. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And... And there's a number of groups now that are doing that and, mm -hmm. and, and, and bringing heresy in. Mm -hmm. Now, understand, I, in the day in which we are right now, in Judges, the book of Judges, chapter 17, it says, I believe in verse 6, it says, And in that day there was no king in Israel, and the people did what was right, right in their, in their own, own sight. Lives. Not wrong. Right. They thought they were being right. It's because they had no king. No discernment. They, there was even more than that. They had no one who had authority over them. Mm -hmm. the, Bible, the Bible should be the final authority right. in our works and actions. Okay? Well, if you discredit the Bible, now I am above the Bible. And I... And my, if Jesus is mistaken, then he can't be Lord. We have a Christianity that's not Christian. Yeah. It, it's, you know, and, <laughs> and, and I it. tell people in this, fall into this, I said, listen, just because you're nuts, right. I don't have to be crazy. Thank you. <laughs> and, 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 and as I told a professor one time, long time ago, because the religious left is as dangerous as the, as the, the political left. As the political left. You're right. He was... He was saying that the first 10 chapters of Genesis mm -hmm. were allegory. Oh, my gosh. I said, okay. I said, so Adam and Eve weren't real. When did things start to be real? Right. Because if if you come and and there's not a literal Adam and Eve, then, then you have this and, crazy theistic evolution where people start speculating and saying whatever their imaginations are. Right. And somewhere it things started being true. So these guys, just knowing where they're coming from, they've become, uh, they don't even maybe realize, I don't know who this guy is from Adam's house cat, but, but when it's all said and done, the, the, the thought process is what I supersede the scriptures. Right. I rise right. above them. Above the word of God. And, yeah. and you know, even Jesus was naive. And, right. It's Didn't a shame he about. wasn't as wise as I am. Right, right. And, 
and, and, and to help people to understand that craziness right. helps them to reject it and to see what it is. Right. You know? And you know, Dennis, I, I think what's happening in, in our culture, we're um, enamored by people's gifts and we don't test the fruit of the Spirit. In other words, we see the gifts of the Spirit sometimes. You know, okay. people are gifted in singing and music and sometimes preaching, speaking, for example. But, you know, I tell people, look, don't be enamored by my preaching if my life doesn't match it. Right. You know, if the fruit's not there. So you got a guy who can sing well and play instruments and, and et cetera, and people say, oh, he's so gifted, he's so talented. That must mean that he's walking inch by inch, step by step with, with God. Right. Well, not necessarily. And he gets up and says, Jesus didn't know what he's talking about. Adam and Eve's not real. Okay, the fruit of the Spirit has just gotten rotten. Well, if I can, if I can say this, um, I'm not speaking for you. I'm just speaking for me. We have a triune God, mm -hmm. and I view man as a trichotomous spirit. Mm -hmm. It's very important. I have a body, I have a soul, I have a spirit. And the Scripture says that. That's right. It, right. Now, many times, the soul and the spirit are used interchangeably, but it says that the Word of God separates the soul from the spirit. Exactly. And that we're to be blessed in Hebrews body, soul, four. and spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what happens. It is possible for a Christian to be out of the will of God and to preach or even to use his talents in a soulish way. The soul of man has great power. We call it charisma. Right. Okay? Can sway and to move. That's why, that's why way back when Jimmy Swaggart was preaching unbelievable... And playing the piano and singing. Right. And, but he was running with prostitutes, right. and they caught him. In the evening. And they yeah. said, well, were these people saved, and was it moving? Well, if they were saved, they were going to be saved because the word of Through God... Jesus. That's right. Not Jimmy Swagger. But he moved thousands and tens of thousands of people just by his power. So that's where I come, and I look right. at this... That, that when their fruits don't measure up right. and they have power, right. brother, it's soul power. Right. That's not, right. No. Not Holy Spirit power. Absolutely right. And so I think Mike LeMay, for example, was absolutely biblically correct. He wasn't pharisaical. He wasn't mean-spirited. But he said, I can't support this. Right. I know he's gifted. And I know he's popular. But he's espousing heresy. He's trashing Jesus. He's going where I can't go. I can't go there. So I'm not going to spoil it. Let's go to the phone lines because we've got callers. Folks, if you want to call in, 623-1330, area code 850, uh, right on. Bob, thank you for listening to Freedom Friday. Thanks for tuning in. You have a question or a comment or an opinion for Dennis? Well, i got it for both of you. Okay, good. This is something I've, I've been on for about two years, and I... I I've called the John Eckerberg show. I live here in Chattanooga, and I, I couldn't get any feedback from this. But what you're talking about is just liberalism in the church, and it's it's all through the major denominations, all through it. Uh, I, I, I was going to a Methodist church, and the pastor wrote a book, a booklet about the Torah, and he says that the first eleven chapters are parable stories, mm -hmm. like Jesus called. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you know, when I when I first went back to this Methodist church, I'm 67 years old, so. I grew up there as a kid, but I didn't go for a long time. I got a hold of a commentary. I'm sure you've heard of it called the Interpreter's Bible Commentary. I have. Mm -hmm. I have never in my life, I've, I've studied Jehovah's Witness, Mormonism, you name it, the Moonies. I have never read any commentary or any book from, from supposedly Christian people that's any worse. They they absolutely, you talk about trashing the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Everything on, on every page, it's unbelievable. They don't even believe there was guards at the tomb of Jesus. Because it's no, it's only mentioned in Matthew. They think Joan was a, a just a, a, a no, he wasn't a historical figure. Samson wasn't a historical figure. Uh, it just goes the the uh, the pillar of cloud by day and uh, pillar of fire by night was just a, a two or three Levites carrying a, a like what we the, the old charcoal grill we had as a right. kid it was round <laughs> had, had yeah. some charcoal in it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? And over a I, over a million people saw that and followed it. Followed a yeah. charcoal grill. Yeah. I was in the Sunday school class, and and we had the, the Sunday school guys, and and this book, Carl, this book is is put out by Abington Press. You know who owns Abington Press? Who? It, who? The United Methodist Church. And and in, in their Sunday schools, they've got these Sunday school guys, which all churches have, and they they were quoting 
uh, stuff like called in right Ephesians, and of course they believe in the JEPD theory. They they teach it as fact. Right. And I, I, I was tell, I was teaching once a month, and I said, look. I want to show you something. This is not a fact. You can believe it what you want to. It's just like evolution. You can believe it, but this is not a fact. Moses wrote the Torah. Right. And, you know, it's not It's not whether Moses wrote it or not, but, you know, Jesus thought Moses wrote well, it. Well, that's People the thing. always have. Yeah, Bob, let me interject. That's the thing. Jesus confirmed that Absolutely. Moses that Moses wrote the Torah. He confirmed that. And, and And so, you know, either Jesus didn't know what he was talking about or he was lying or he is God in the flesh who confirmed that Moses wrote the Torah. So that's good enough for me. Well, let me ask you, because we've got other callers on the line, did you have a specific question for Dennis and me? Well, no, I just want to make this comment, because this same pastor I was talking about, this message church, I asked him one day, I said, what's your take on the, the Scriptures? Do you think it's the verbal, plenary the Word of God? He said, oh, no, oh, no, it's just not It's not inspired until <laughs> it gets into somebody's heart. Yeah, well, well Bob... Heart. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you were finished with that sentence. I, I, I don't want to keep it any longer, but I'm just saying that our churches, uh, you know what? I'm not going to judge these people as far as their salvation goes, but they are they are tearing the Bible. You might as well take scissors or a knife and just a pen knife and cut it up. Because yeah. They don't believe it. They I don't know. believe it. Anymore. Yeah, listen, Bob, well spoken. God bless you. Thanks for listening, and thank you for your commentary and opinion. Dennis, you want to respond to that? We've got about a minute. We need to take oh, a break. It, it's 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 sad. It's sad. We call that a Dalmatian view of the Bible. Yeah. They believe it in spots. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and trying to figure out, you know, they're div- they feel that they're divinely anointed to recognize what is and what's not. And, and again, it's the same thing with this guy. God didn't know what he was doing. Let me tell you what God should have done. Right. And, and these people are scary, man. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And to declare that the first 11 chapters of the Bible is allegory, and like you said it beautifully a moment ago, when did it start to become real? When right. did it start? Why and, stop, and who? Why stop at 11? Why stop at 11? It, but a dozen's better. We always right. knew that. But here's the truth. Here's the <laughs> biblical truth. The first, you're, you're right, the first 11 chapters, really the first 12, because there's where the promise is given to Abraham, right. the first 12 chapters, that is the foundation of the entirety of the rest of God's Word. If you can't get past the first 12 chapters, then, brother, the rest of the Word means nothing. Correct. And so who do you think is behind destroying the foundation or attempting to destroy and saying, oh, the first 11, 12 chapters, that's just a bunch of fairy tales. Does that sound satanic to you? Oh, it sounds it to me. Yeah, it does. Listen, we've got to take a time out. We're going to come back. we got more callers on the line. Rebecca, you're up next, and we've got others behind. If you want to be a part of the show, call in 623-1330, area code 850. We've got...